Hi everyone, it's Simone Watson, and um, I think this is my fourth video about writing and mental health. And today I want to talk about medication, um, psychiatric medication, um, which is going to be quite a controversial topic. Um, I'm going to put a slight trigger warning here. I'm going to mention some triggering topics, but not in detail. You know, nothing graphic is going to be mentioned. But if you want to know what the trigger warning is for, I will put that in the description. Um, I also really feel the need to preface this because when you're talking about something medical, like it's, you know, important. Um, I am not giving medical advice at all. I really, really want to emphasize that. I am not a medical professional. I'm not qualified to give any medical advice. Please, please do not take anything that I am saying as medical advice or as something that should, like, that I'm telling you to do what I do. Don't take it like that at all. Don't don't trust my advice over that of a medical professional. I'm not giving advice, but anything that is taken as advice, I don't want anyone to trust that above that of a medical professional at all, or to take it as me even presuming to be a medical professional. I'm not at all. Okay, so I just want to be very careful to emphasize that. Please do not see what I'm saying as medical advice. Okay, so let's talk about medication real quick. Okay, so it's October now. So a year ago, in October 2016, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Um, it took me a long time to even like say that on this channel. Um, if you watch my first couple of writing and mental health videos, I haven't made one in a while. But on my first few, I never said what I had. I mean, if you knew what symptoms I was talking about, you might know that I had bipolar disorder. I just wasn't saying it because I really, it took me a while to get comfortable saying it. Um, and so now I'm, it's still a little bit like, eh, but I'm okay to say it. Um, Mental Illness Awareness Week was recently, and I know I kind of missed that, but I feel like any time is a good time to talk about mental illness. You know what I mean? Like in a, in a way, not any time, but you know what I mean? Well, yeah, any time, because we need to break the stigma. So we need to talk about it, yeah. Um, okay, so, so the year, 2016 in general was quite tumultuous for me because of my physical health and my mental health. And so I was having neurological problems and we still don't really know what has been causing neurological problems. Like it's still an ongoing thing in that way. So I'm not gonna super, I'm not gonna go into super, du super duper detail about that. But um, I, so I, got to a point where we weren't sure what was going on neurologically, but my neurologist did suggest that my mood, that I was having mood problems that she thought might be bipolar disorder. She said this in August, but she could not diagnose bipolar disorder because she, um, I don't mean to say it in such a rush, but she couldn't diagnose it because she is a neurologist. Like they can't do that. Technically they have to send you to a, like a therapist or a psychiatrist. So that's why I didn't have a diagnosis at that point in time. But when she said this in August, she prescribed me a medication that treats bipolar disorder and treats seizures because I was having seizures. So she was like, and, and my previous seizure medication had been really, really bad. I'd had two previous seizure medications that had been horrible for me psychologically um, and had horrible psychological side effects. So she was like, here, we're going to give you something that is going to help your moods, hopefully, and is gonna help with the seizures. Um, and so, yeah, so at that time I started taking this medication. Um, and then in October, uh, had it confirmed by a therapist um, that I had bipolar disorder. I don't know if I still be believed it. I don't know if I believed it when she said it, but here's the thing. When my neurologist said it, I was really, really angry um, and resentful toward her. Um, I mean, like really, 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 really angry that she was, even suggesting that because my thoughts on bipolar disorder was my thoughts on bipolar disorder were pretty much limited to what I had seen on TV. Um, the first time I ever heard of it was from Degrassi, you know, Craig back in the day, back in the 20 aughts and everything. So, you know, I was upset. I was like, I don't, there's no way that that's me. Like, there's no way that I have that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no, there's, she's, she, she doesn't know what she's talking about, blah, 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 blah. So that's what I thought. But I took the medicine anyway. And the medicine did help with the seizures. 
and according to people around me it helped with my mood as well but I didn't really notice at first it was just like okay I mean and then sometimes I kind of did notice at some point I maybe kind of did notice so here's the thing with bipolar disorder I feel like I'm still learning things about it even after a year and I feel like it doesn't it's hard to describe what it feels like but the best way I can describe this and I have written about this in one of my many many works in progress that you might see eventually but the best way I can describe this also my therapist says I have what she calls bipolar disorder with anxiety so the way I feel about this is I have these like four kind of things yeah these four moods uh, and then there's I can kind of be in the middle yeah but the four moods I have mania or hypomania and this is generally what bipolar disorder means you have mania or hypomania and you have depression mania or hypomania is when you um these are two different they're two different things but i kind of have a hard time understanding the difference between mania and hypomania um maybe mania lasts longer i think from whatever so i don't think i've had mania i think i've had hypomania hypomania i don't really know but anyway it's this mood where everything is like your mind is like going a million miles per hour sometimes you do things in excess you do things with less inhibition than usual um you feel sometimes you feel really happy or like excited when you do this when you have mania but it i don't know if i would say it's always happy i think a lot of people have said it's not always like a happy thing sometimes it's just like an i can't turn my mind off thing but you also can feel sort of uh like enabled uh powerful so to speak like you can do anything you know you can just like do all this kind of stuff and if you're you know working on a creative pursuit like oh i can just write all the words i can write all the words i can paint all the pictures i can do whatever whatever so that's a mood okay and then you have depression which is can be which can manifest as sadness but it can also be like a i it's yeah, everything's kind of slow i don't feel like doing anything i it's hard to get motivated it's hard to stay focused it's just kind of like nah. And for me, depression can feel like something that I already know and I'm not usually sad about. Suddenly I'm sad about that thing. For example, one time I had a depressive episode and I was sad that nighttime happens slash that the sun sets, which seems like a very random thing to be sad about because I've always known it. It's not a sad, generally it's not a sad thing to me. But at that moment in time, it just felt like, oh my gosh, like, that's sad. And, I mean, people are going to think what they're going to think when they watch this. Like, people are going to be like, yeah, right, whatever. But, I mean, that's how it feels. Like, things that are just normal, think normal details of life suddenly can become sad. Um, And then, so, the other two moods basically are anxiety, where it's like things are kind of scary i guess we've all heard of anxiety yeah and anger and we've all heard of anger but for me the way that anger manifests sometimes not all the time but if i'm in a if i'm in a state of, of anger related to bipolar disorder sometimes it manifests in a way that's like it's like i can't it's like a speeding train of it like i can't stop it and so here's the thing i'll be like yelling about something or just be really mad about something and it's something that usually wouldn't make me angry or whatever but uh, it's making me really angry and someone is like calm down or whatever and it's like i physically cannot like calm down like i can't i can't calm down until i get to the end until i like run out of steam you know what i'm saying so in all four of these moods um, in my experience, this may not be the way that everyone experiences bipolar disorder, but this is the way I experience it. In all four of these moods, there are things that I feel to be true, that like things that really feel true that may not actually be true, or that may not be what I would believe in general, like overall what I would believe. For example, okay, like the person that I'm yelling at or whatever, if I'm, if I'm like in an angry state. The person that I'm yelling at just doesn't care about me at all. 
that's what I believe at that moment, or not believe, that's what I feel at that moment, that's what I feel to be true. But in general, I do believe that this person does care about me very much, okay? Because usually the person I'm yelling at is somebody I care about. Not always, but generally I do believe that person cares about me very much, but in that moment, it feels very real and true that that person doesn't care. So the reason why I'm stating this is because is because when I take medication, it is easier for me when in these different moods, it's easier for me to separate the things that feel to be true from things that are actually true. Um, even though the feeling may be really strong. Okay, so I may be like, I really, really feel like this person doesn't care about me, but there is st it's easier for me to understand that, okay, that's a manifestation of the disease. That is not my actual general overall feeling, okay? Um, there's also this pervasive belief recently, not just recently, but yeah, kind of recently, like August-ish. There was this pervasive belief I had that sleep was a bad thing, um, that I needed to be productive all the time. And especially like if I hadn't been as productive as I wanted to be during the day, then I can't go to sleep because sleep is going to be a failure. Uh, I'm not encouraging this mindset at all. This is a false, I, I think this is a false belief. I think in actuality, sleep is not a failure. Sleep is a good thing. Sleep is healthy. Sleep is something that I need to do. I need to do it you know, and I, I don't need to try and stay up with the belief that, like, I'm going to fail if I fall asleep. Like, you know, trying to stay up until hours and hours in the morning. Now, there are lots of other things that complicate sleep um, in, in, you know, my particular manifestation of the illness. There are lots of th other things that complicate sleep. Sometimes I just lose track of time while I'm doing something. I, you know, I lose track of time or I get scared that I'll lose, like, if I'm writing a certain scene, I get scared that I'll forget it. If I go the next day, like I'll forget where I am and scene or whatever, or what I'm trying to do. So there are lots of things that complicate sleep and can make it difficult to sleep and difficult to keep a good sleep schedule. And that could be a whole video in and of itself, right? Writing a mental illness sleep. But the thing is, the medication is the kind of the thing that I'm talking about right now. The medication makes it easier for me to understand, okay, as strongly as I feel like sleep is a bad thing, that is false. Whereas if I don't take the medication, it may not occur to me that that thought is false, right? I feel it very strongly and therefore it seems true, okay? And so personally, one belief that seems to pop up in any of these moods is ironically the belief that I don't need medication. And Again, this is a controversial topic. A lot of people, some people are against taking psychiatric medication and, and some people choose not to do it. I'm not knocking anyone else's beliefs or choices about this. I am not knocking those people. There may be some point in time where I don't take it, okay? So I'm I'm not, there's no, you know, no shame in, in, in other people's philosophy. And I understand that sometimes some medications have side effects or whatever. But for me, for me, the different moods if i like they have this pervasive feeling that like i don't need to take my medication and if i've taken my medication then okay i can just be like okay that thought of not needing to take it is kind of false like or or not needing it or that it's not going to help me quote unquote is like false because it's actually going to help me um but if i don't take it there's an increased chance that i'm not going to take it the next like i'm like if i don't take it that time there's an increased chance i'm not going to take it the next time and there's an increased chance I'm not going to take it the next time. So it's like a snowball effect because um, that pervasive belief that I don't actually need it becomes stronger. Plus, depending on the mood, I may completely forget about it. Like if I'm in hypomania and I'm just, you know, whatever, whatever, thinking about writing ideas, I'm having a bunch of writing ideas, I'm doing this and this and this, and I've got to go do this and i got to write this down, i got to do this and i got to do all this, then... I may completely forget that medication exists. Similarly, if I'm in a depressive state and I'm like, oh, I don't feel like doing anything, I may forget that the medication exists. Or I may just feel like, if I'm in a mania, I'm like, why would I do that? I feel perfectly, see, the weird thing about mania, and this may not be for everybody, but the weird thing about mania is, 
I feel like it decreases your self-awareness a little bit to where you think that what you're experiencing is actually normal, even though if you look back on it later, you're like, okay, that wasn't normal. That was a mania. But sometimes it can feel in the moment like normal because your mind is just like, yeah, like, or even if it doesn't feel normal, sometimes I can tell that it's mania, but I'm like, I don't want to stop doing this. I'm productive. I am writing. I am getting things done. Like I am like on it. You know what I'm saying? I am on the grind right now. Why would I take the medication that's going to slow me down? Why would I take that? And here's the thing is for me personally, taking the medication right now is the thing that I'm doing. It's the thing that I have chosen to do. And it, I feel like it is helping me. And so all of these other thoughts to the contrary are false. And so, you know, if I get in an, if I get in a pattern of not taking it or being inconsistent, even if I think I'm going to be more productive without it, I'm not like, I'm usually not. I'm usually not. The time management thing just gets way, bleh, way far away from me. And I don't know where the hours are going. I also struggle with what's called a time perception problem. I don't know if that's connected to bipolar disorder or not. It's something that a lot of um, autistic people and um, people with Asperger's syndrome struggle with. So, but I don't know if it's connected with bipolar disorder, but time perception is like, you can't, unless you look at the clock, you have no idea how much time is going by. So you could be doing something for like, an hour and it feels like five minutes or you could be doing something for five minutes it feels like an hour maybe not that extreme but they talk about it on the tv show stitchers as well but anyway um my time management i think can really suffer if i don't take my medication for like a long period of time um and physical symptoms can happen too it's like bipolar disorder is weird because sometimes it can cause physical symptoms i don't know maybe because the sleep thing gets all bleh and then other, I don't know. I don't know. But the thing is, I was, someone said on the Word Nerds, someone on Word Nerds said that John Green said this. And I don't know if John Green said this because I don't want to misquote, but someone said that he said that at one point he um, thought about stopping the medication for his mental illness. Maybe he actually did stop medication for his mental illness because he thought that stopping the medication would make him right better um and that we have this kind of idea of like a tortured artist and that like if you're depressed like you're right better and, da, 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 da. and you know i think yeah i think that there is that like weird myth that like being depressed is gonna make you right yeah yeah for me for me that's not how it works and for a lot of people that's not how it works for me that's not how it works i i don't i don't you know Depressive episodes do not help me write. Except, no, depressive episodes really don't help me write. Not overall. Not in terms of, like, overall productivity. I may get, like, a good sentence, but I'm not going to get... No, it's they don't help me write. They don't. I'm just going to... No. Um, manic episodes do sometimes cause me to get writing done. However... It's a lot of times, like, I don't even know if I would call it, like, worth it. Because, first of all, manic episodes... First of all, if I have a manic episode, I could very well stay up and write until 8 in the morning. And guess what? My entire week, okay, my entire week is gonna be probably messed up. Because I'm not gonna be able to sleep... If I didn't sleep that night, I'm not going to be able to sleep the next night or I'm going to fall asleep during the day or I'm just going to kind of like stay manic. It just, it's just a mess. Like sometimes it's not a mess, but a lot of times it's a mess and it's not a good thing to risk. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then the other risk of a manic episode is for me, if I have a manic episode, there's like a this, there's like a this, there's a no, 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 no. I, I would, or let me, this makes more sense. Pretend this is a tree and I'm a bird and I'm flying. Yay! And then I crash into the tree and then whoosh, fall down. And when I fall, that's called depression. And for me personally, there's like one of the worst feelings of this whole illness is the transition from a mania to a depressive episode. 
it's like a like it's like sudden and it's it's painful like you know it's like painful it's like man like i thought i had something good and now i don't and so for me personally and for right now right now because i don't want to say that this is permanently gonna be my situation but for right now taking medication is something that works for me and is helpful for me and i have to try and remember that when my brain is telling me otherwise okay um so if anyone has any thoughts on this i would love to know your thoughts because yeah i mean because yeah i mean because this is i think this is i think i think mental illness as a whole is something that we should talk about and i think there's so much more you could go into with the whole tortured writing trope and the da 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 whatever, but you know, it just, it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me. And even in moments where my brain is like, oh, you should know, you should do this and this, it just doesn't work for me. So I just want to know other people's experiences with this, or if you just, anything that you, if you have any questions or like whatever, something that you would like me to talk about in my next writing and mental is it called writing in mental health or writing in mental illness? I don't know. I'm going to look at the other titles and find out. But if there's something you would like to hear about in my next video, please tell me. Um, and thank you for watching. And I will see you very soon. Bye.